Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to show you three different methods you can use to configure a default route. Now we first introduced the concept of the, de of the default route in the ICND1 material and just as a refresher a default route is a catch-all. In other words it will match any packet if a more specific route is not found in your IP route table. So default routes are very useful to use. They're simple to configure and they can keep your route table very small because one default route can represent many many routes. So we're going to continue the conversation and take a look at these three methods. The first one we will use a static route in order to create a default route and then we'll take a look at how to use the IP default network command and the IP default gateway command. Here's the network we're going to be working on. We have three routers A, B, and C and each one has a local area network connected to it. Each router is connected via a serial connection and we're going to use a slash 30 in order to number our serial links. So here's the first one and here is the second one. We'll start off by looking at how to create the default route by using a static route and we'll do that on router A. So we'll configure the default route here and it's going to enable us to get to router B's local area network. So essentially we'll create the static route and we'll say if anyone in here wants to get over here go over to router B. Okay so now let's jump on router A and make that happen. Okay on router A let's take a look at the route table you can see we have the slash 30 for our point-to-point -point link to router B and we have our local area network but we don't have any routes to the 192.168.2.0 network which is router B's local area network. Also take a look at this line and just keep it in, in, in mind as we progress. Gateway of last resort is not set. That means we don't have a default route configured and chosen for this particular router. Okay, so router A is not running any routing protocols with router B so it has no way to get to router B's local area network. In fact if we try to ping router B's LAN interface you can see it's going to fail because router A just has no knowledge of it. So that's where the default route can come in. The command we want to use is the IP route command. Now normally we put our IP network here and then we follow it by a subnet mask. But when you create a default route using a static route you use these, all zeros, for each of the quads in your IP address as well as the subnet mask. This means that they are going to match all packets. Again, the assumption is no better route is found in the route table and we've already confirmed that. We don't have any routes to the 192.168 network. Now, we're saying this is our catch-all. These will match anything, but where are we going to send it? Well, we can either put an IP address here or an interface. So we can go ahead, 172.16.1.2, which is router B's serial interface, or we could put our interface that we want to use to exit, so serial 000. You can use either one. Let's go ahead and enter that. And now let's take a look at our route table using the show IP route command. The first thing I want to point out is on the bottom. You can see here we have a static route and it has an asterisk near it which in the legend tells us it's a candidate default route. So you can have multiple default routes configured but the router is only going, only going to choose one. And you can see it's all zeros with a subnet mask of zero. That means it's going to match everything. And it's via 172.161.2 which is router B's serial uh, interface IP. Okay, so now if we look up a little bit, now we can see the gateway of last resort is defined. It's telling us that in order to get to network 0000, which is everything, we have to go to this IP, which is router B, which is what we configured. Okay, so router B is now our gateway to the rest of the world. Should I now try to ping its LAN interface, even though I don't have a specific route for it, the default route should pick it up and route it for me. And there we go. A successful ping to router B's LAN interface now that we have a default route on there. 
Okay, so the commands here, IP route, and then we can always verify our route table by using show IP route. Okay, so that's the static route. Let's take a look at the next option, which is using the IP default network command. And this, this approach is a lot different. What we're going to do this time is, by using this command, we're going to first identify a route in a route table, and then kind of borrow that information in order to create our default network. So for instance, we're going to look at router A again, and we're going to look for its route to router B's local area network. And then we're going to take that information, borrow it, in order to create a default route so that we can go ahead and successfully ping IPs on router C's local area network. Okay? So let's jump on router A and see how this is done. Okay, let's start off by looking at router A's IP route table you can see we don't have a default route configured. The gateway of last resort is not set. We have our connected routes just as we did before, but this time we've deleted that, that static route, the default route, and instead we just have a static route for router B's local area network, the slash 24 here. So what we're going to do is jump into configuration mode, and the command is IP default network now the parameter here has to be a classful network from your route table. So if I were to choose that 10 network there, just as an example, it would not work because that is not a classful uh, network in my route table. So the only one I have here, which is one we're going to use, is our route to router B's local area network. So back to the route table, and the gateway of last resort now lists the next top IP address of router B in order to get to its local area network. And that is what router A is going to use as the default route information. See how we're borrowing that static route information? And with this command, we're just saying, okay, choose this route and borrow that information and then use that as a default. You can see now that the 192.168.2.0 has an asterisk, so it's a candidate for the default route, and clearly it was chosen as the best one because now we are defining our gateway of last resort with that information. Okay, so this approach is, this approach is a little bit different. Um, you choose an existing route and borrow that info. Finally, to prove if this works, I can just go ahead and ping router C's LAN interface and it works even though I don't have a specific route to that network. The default route picked it up. Okay, now for the last method we're going to take a look at the IP default gateway command. And this is actually a little bit different than the other two we just looked at. Here, this is only really used when IP routing is not enabled on a device. So we can still use router A as an, as an example, but let's say it's just a regular host now. It's not actually routing between networks. It's not actually functioning like a router. It's just an average host, like a PC. So the IP default gateway command, it probably sounds a little bit fam familiar to you. You know, this command is used just like you would define a default gateway for a PC on a network. It's a little bit different on a router. Okay, this time, IP default gateway and we'll put router B's serial interface IP address. Now if we issue show IP route you can see the default gateway is set and there's really nothing in the IP route table because IP routing is not enabled. Let's go ahead and try to ping and we are successful. We can go ahead and reach uh, router B's local area network because now we have a default gateway and we just send everything we don't know about to the default gateway. Okay, to summarize, we can use a static route to create a default route. Just remember, we use all zeros to match everything. Or we can use the IP default network command, and there we're just borrowing information already in the IP route table. Keep in mind there, the requirement is the network you choose has to be a classful major network.
Okay, no subnets allowed to be used here. Otherwise, it just won't work. And then finally, if IP routing is not enabled and the router is just like any other host, well, it, like any other host, it needs a default gateway. So we use the IP default gateway command there. Now, one final note, default routes are going to be propagated differently when we talk about routing protocols. And it changes depending on which default route method you use to create the default route and which routing protocol is in use. Now the specifics are outside of this particular tutorial scope, but just keep this in mind. There are bigger implications in, uh, regarding which of these methods you choose, okay? And we'll touch upon some of those in the routing protocols uh, configuration tutorials. Okay, so that's it. That is uh, three ways to create default routes. Thanks for watching.